I, I was playing with this before, like months ago, and I thought it was just fascinating because one of the things that Professor Wadler said, and one of the things you hear consistently is this idea of Plutus being like a modular system or a block-like system. Even on the little one-pager that we got, they visually represented Marlowe as kind of like Lego blocks and the way you're going to be able to stack code on top of each other. And all the complex code is happening behind those blocks. So behind that red block, behind that green block. And whatever you want to do for your smart contract, if you want to fund your smart contract, um, if you want to put like a thousand ADA in your smart contract, you just pretty much enter a thousand ADA, create that block, give it the direction of what it's going to do, and you just plug and play. And I, I think that this is powerful. So, Rick, I don't know if you had a, an example to show, but I think this is this is pretty interesting. No, I don't have an example to show, but only that this uh, uh, this part of GitHub that has Marlowe set up in here is it's functional in some way, and apparently it's easy for people who are involved in a financial system and understand how banks work. Apparently, this is easy for an expert finance person to be able to assemble the data. And I think there's gonna be more work done on Marlowe on improving the visual representation. But um, yeah, that's all I know about it. I just wanted to make sure people know how to get to it or so that if one of the software engineers out there uh, see this podcast, they know where the links are and they can get to the, the right place and experiment and maybe learn something from there, okay? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, so when I was at Plutus Fest, we had a few different events with, with media. And during that time, I was talking to one media agency. And the person that was doing the interview was talking about Marlowe. And they're like, oh, yeah. And I just went to the website. And it reminded me of Scratch, which, if you don't know, is a different, like, a programming platform to teach kids how to program. And like, oh, yeah, it just reminded me of Scratch. You just drag and drop the boxes around, and then you press run and see what happens. I was like, exactly. You just you just put some boxes around, and then you can see what happens if you were to de deploy this smart contract in the blockchain. And, you know, it really shows how easy it is for people to play around and how important it is to have something that even the media can understand. Because obviously, you, the media's job is extremely difficult, especially when it comes to a project as complex as Cardano. There's so much going on, such depth to all these projects, and it's really hard for them to parse it. And if they can just go to a website and just see a UI and drag and drop stuff around and, and, and play with it, it really helps clarify the concepts for them and really enables them to, to introduce Cardano, the work we're doing, to the world. Yeah, and I would like to thank Manuel Chakravarti for um, getting this demo out there at Plutus Fest and the two fellows that came after him, and that was Michael Payton Jones and John Mueller. Um, th those were the fellows who demonstrated this. I really admire when people can do live demos like that because that's where I learned a lot. I mean, I saw that and was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what that's doing, but I think I can replicate that. So thanks, guys, for putting that out there. Sebastian just made another good point, and, you know, it could tie back to our episode one, when mass adoption, the idea that Cardano is – making this block-like system and people like you said are in the media are like oh wow it reminds me of this my my child does this or it's just drag and drop how easy is it getting so i mean in the future as these as when when plutus and when marlo re release when smart contracts are live within cardano people are going to be able to to build their solutions regardless of what industry they come from so if you're a bank looking to uh, make your smart contract, you'll be able to do it. If you're a small business, uh, a startup, whatever whatever your use case is, you're going to be able to communicate um, with, Plu with Plutus through Meadow, um, through that Meadow block-like system and, you know, that Meadow Marlowe system and create your solutions. And I think that this decrease the barrier to entry is exactly what Cardano is going for. And Couple that with the scientific and academic rigor behind the papers that Cardano releases. So each one of those blocks that you see, you can guarantee that that code is not going to malfunction on you. So those little red blocks that we saw, if you say see 200 data, it's going to be 200 data. It's not going to do some funny thing behind the scenes and, you know, your contract's going to get messed up. That's why Cardano is taking this 
methodical approach to build their cryptocurrency. It's to make sure that the blocks, when it's ready to be used by the masses, are all correct and they function as, as, as advertised. And that's extremely important.